Hello everyone. In this video, I will talk about how to use singletons for data persistence. Singleton is a popular design pattern which has various uses. The main properties of a singleton class are that it has a single instance and it has a global point of access. If you want to know more about the singleton pattern and how it's implemented in Unity, please check out my video on singletons. I will link the video in the description below. In this video, I will only be showing you how to use a singleton class to save and retrieve data between scenes. I have the same exact setup as my previous videos. I have a, a data save scene where I will use the input field and a button to save the data. And in the next scene, I will be retrieving that data to show it on the screen. In my last video on static class, I was saving this data onto a static class and then retrieving that data inside the data retrieve scene. And in this video, I will show you how you can use the uh, singleton class to do the same thing. I will create a new singleton class. Let's name it singleton test. And to bring it in the scene, I will create a simple empty game object. Now, once we have the class, in our scene, there are various ways to convert a normal class into a singleton class. I will just show you one of those methods. So this is the code block that converts a normal class, a normal mono behavior class into a singleton class. And you can use it for any of your classes. The only thing that you will have to change is the change the type here from singleton test to the name of your singleton class. I will briefly explain how this works. So you have a static variable named instance and this is your global point of access. You will use this variable to access functions or variables inside your singleton class. In awake, I have used the don't destroy and load function which preserves a game object on scene load so that it is not destroyed. And I am uh, putting this singleton test onto the instance variable so that others can access it. And in the else block, I have the destroy game object code. This code block is called on the duplicates of my singleton test class. So if I, I have the same object and if I reload my scene, I don't want to have two instances. So the destroy game object function fulfills the first criteria of a singleton class that it should only have a single instance. I have better explanation of this in my other video. Now, in order to save data on your singleton class, we should have some variables of appropriate type. So if you want to save a float value, you need a float variable. So let's create our public float float value. And on this value, just like we did in the video on static classes, this value will be a holder of our data. Now coming to our value setter, this function gets the value from the input field and then saves it. What we were doing previously was using our static class and getting that float value and uh, saving our own value. But if we have a singleton class, what we will do is in order to access a singleton class, you just have to write the singleton name, then go to the instance variable and this instance variable refers to your singleton class. And in order to access any variable or the function, you can just type dot and it will show you all the variables and function inside your singleton. Float value and we will fill it with our with the value that you we want to save. So we can give it the float value equal to our value. Now if we come inside our Unity project and go into the play mode, you will see we have a, our value setter function which will take the value from this input field and set it to the float value variable on our singleton. So let's test it. We'll give it some value and then click on set value, which will change the value on our singleton. So this was the value saving part. You saw how easy it was to just write the singleton name dot instance and dot any variable where you want to save your data. Now I will show you how the don't destroy and load uh, helps to pass information from one scene to other scene. 
So first I will show you we have our data save scene where we have the singleton game object on, on the data retrieve scene where we want to retrieve the data we don't have our singleton game object but what happens is that since our singleton uses the don't destroy and load function when I go from data save scene to data retrieve scene everything else is destroyed but our singleton is preserved I will show you this in action so this is our data save scene I will press X we have our singleton test object I will press X to go into the data retrieve scene and you saw this data retrieve scene now also has a copy of our singleton game object because of the don't destroy on load function we can again go back to our previous scene using X we still have that singleton test copy we can again go back and we still have that game object. so this game object is always preserved between loading from one scene to a, another even reloading of the same scene now this uh, game object being not destroyed is what we, you will use to pass data between scenes so you saw how to save data onto the singleton game object you also saw how to pass the singleton game object from scene to scene now the only thing left is to show you how to retrieve that data in the other scene which is the data retrieve scene so on the data retrieve scene I have my value getter and previously what we were doing is writing static test dot float value to get the saved value on our static file but this time since we are using the our singleton class we will actually get the value from our singleton test class so singleton test will go to its instance which is the actual singleton object and then get our value which is the float value now I'll come inside unity play mode and show you this in action so first I am inside my data save scene where I will input some values set the values and you can see that the singleton is now holding that value 20 now if I go into my data retrieve scene by pressing X you can see that the value getter can successfully get the saved value and we also have our singleton game object with the same value that we saved in our previous scene so you can again go back by pressing X save a different value let's say 50 and then go back to our first scene the data retrieving scene we can see that it retrieves the new saved data so you saw how easy it was to save and retrieve data using a singleton class you will also have noticed that the method we use to save or retrieve data that we write a class name dot and the instance and the variable name is very similar in the case of singletons that it is very similar to how we did in our static class video and yes it is very similar but the only difference being that if you have a singleton class you can actually see those values those saved values inside your inspector which is not possible if you are using static classes to save your value the other benefit is that your singletons can implement mono behavior they can derive from mono behavior so you can do some specific mono behavior things like on start or update etc so in general singletons are a better way of passing data or saving data and also singletons have other uses as well as game managers and score managers etc